when we just don't wanna be here Worried about what tomorrow holds Don't wanna get there in a hurry So let's forget about Okay, so maybe it's important to give a bit of context. Um, I'm currently in front of one of these places that I've wanted to film in front of for a very, very long time. This is an abandoned gas station in central Bulgaria. I've been waiting a long time to film here. And what better topic to focus on for this video than to talk about hitchhiking and filmmaking. If I were to ask you, what's the moment you realized, but like really realized that the world had this kind of endlessness to it, what would you say? For me, the answer is simple. It's the first moment I ever went out to hitchhike. The first moment I realized that holding a sign in your hands with a direction was like a ticket. Like people would literally say, okay, you wanna go there? I'll help you free of charge. This trend of traveling with a sign started in university, like most stupid brilliant decisions, of course, when I along with two adventurous people decided to attempt going from the Netherlands to Spain, and more specifically, from Amsterdam to Barcelona with complete strangers. And to this day, that first trip instilled with me this feeling that anything is possible and any sort of adventure is possible. And that sounds incredibly cliche, and maybe because it is, but things are cliches because they've been proven to be true. And at the time, I decided to film it, and I had zero knowledge, zero knowledge at that time of how to film, how to tell a story, how to present a travel like this. But you know what? That wasn't needed, not in the slightest. Because everything is what it was supposed to be and everything was perfect. The way light filters in through the windows of the 18-wheeler truck that picked us up. The early morning sunrise at the beach in Barcelona. The indecisiveness of whether to use footage from your GoPro or your camera and so you just use both. The transition from Barcelona to Paris to the fall leaf-covered streets, the halo lights of the evening and this feeling that everything is here and now. And in the end, I think I was able to get all of this across, this adventure, without having all the needed expertise in order to tell it in the exact way I thought I would. This travel, this, this film about this travel, was the first thing that got me into thinking that I wanted to tell stories about places that I would go to. Places that would end up on this channel as well, like Japan, like Kyrgyzstan, like Iceland, and Namibia. But it's exactly this travel that also inspired me in 2018 to film a commercial for Canon in a way that I don't think anybody really expected me to. And that was to find the best way to use the budget that I had in order to get as far as I could. Uh, I would like to go from Sofia to Tivat, Montenegro on auto stop and to film the whole thing with a Canon camera. The trip is free and everything is around that. So basically to provide some context, I think this is 2018, so the small little pocket camera, the M50, Canon's M50 Mark I, I think at the time, had just come out. And there was a handful of people within the country tasked with finding some way to market it. And so I started to think about what would be this crazy adventure to go on, something that I hadn't done before. And I look on the map as to what I have near Bulgaria, and I stumble across Montenegro, a place that I had never really thought about going. But suddenly, I find its coastal city, Kotor, and I think about how can I possibly go there with the limited budget that I had? And of course, hitchhiking came to mind. I need to keep the energy up. Uh, I need to be alive and excited and uh, youthful so that people trust me and my... Uh... There's this very cliched saying about needing to dust off your wings and all and needing to get back into the rhythm of things. Um, and that's exactly what it felt like wanting to go to Montenegro, especially because this was the first moment in a long time that I had hitchhiked, and I decided to ask one of my closest friends if he wanted to join. And in some way, I felt responsible because of the fact that I needed to make sure that this travel went according to plan and that we actually got to the country in the first place. And then suddenly, we did have luck. And the first person that picked us up was this construction worker who absolutely insisted at stopping at his construction site on the way to Serbia. And then we were picked up by these two people that I think were on their way to Germany to drop off something. And they stopped us right at Belgrade, at the capital. 
стигнахме в Белград. Всъщност, ние се късняхме много, защото идеята беше да тръгнем в 7 часа сутринта, но в край на край ще тръгнахме в 10.30. And the thing that I was most excited about was the train that we were going to take, this apparently hidden gem in Eastern Europe. This train that goes from Belgrade into Bosnia and Herzegovina and finally drops off at Bar in Montenegro. Ah, uh, okay, 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 isn't it? And it's not price ticket from here, or the price ticket company. You can pick it together, two people, tomorrow. Yes. 29, Belgrade Bar. Price in a euro. Yes. Now, I can't explain how exciting this experience was for me. 12 hours on the most quintessential train experience ever, being woken up in the middle of the night for passport control as you cross borders and just going through tunnel after tunnel to suddenly find yourself over Vista and Vista. It's incredible. Montenegro, for those of you who haven't gone, is one of the most beautiful countries that I think I've been to in Europe. And, of course, in a country like that, there are many incredible moments that stand out. But I'm just going to start out and highlight this one. On the way back after this crazy commercial film throughout the country, we're again back on a train to head back into Serbia to then start hitchhiking back to Bulgaria. The way back was a lot more difficult than the way there. I remember at one point we were waiting maybe what seemed like three hours for somebody to pick us up and decided to walk to a toll booth, which was like a three kilometer walk away where nobody picked us up. And one thing led to the other and finally a Bulgarian coming back from Germany decided to pick us up, who was very much in a rush to get back home. And I think we were going at maybe twice the speed limit, which was great after all the time that we lost on the way. You know, hitchhiking has this magic uh, to it. I think that the most important thing, this combination of telling stories through video, but also deciding to entrust yourself to complete strangers who you might be with for 10 kilometers, 100 kilometers, maybe an entire country, is something incredibly moving. And it's incredibly moving because of the fact that it's inspiring in a way. You have maybe five minutes, maybe an hour, maybe half a day to share as much as you want of somebody or as little as you want. And during that time, I think that that is what storytelling is all about. It's about meeting somebody that you might never see again and deciding to either be incredibly personal with them or just be quiet the entire time and sleep on the back seat. And that's where the combination lies. Hitchhiking is electric, it's inspiring, it's beautiful, and more importantly, it's sometimes the only option you have when you're trying to fit yourself in within a certain budget for a commercial. This is the project that I ended up filming for Canon Bulgaria four years ago. Yeah, four years ago now. Um, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you're inspired to go wherever you're going next by hitchhiking. Is there any sound quite as nice as that of a train traveling through the mountains of Montenegro? Not for me. That's me sitting aboard the Bar to Belgrade Express train. The last part of my journey I took alongside my close friend and a small mirrorless camera. Here's our step-by-step -step guide to creating a spontaneous trip in the Balkans. Step 1. Start in Sofia. Wake up to rain. Stop and contemplate whether to start hitchhiking to Serbia or stay dry in your warm car. Hitchhike in the rain. Cover 400 kilometers in roughly 5 hours before arriving in Belgrade. Leave your bags and head out to get a glimpse of the city before getting your train tickets for the next day. Wake up and nearly miss your train. Watch out for the conductor as you hang out of the window in between tunnels, bridges, poles and the odd bush during your travel from Belgrade to Bar. Be too tired to film your first evening in Bar and start directly with Kotl. Run through the streets of the old town to the beat of church bells. Wander along the Bay of Kotor before you pass out for the night. Get up the next morning and absolutely make your way to Teros. With a small boat, bypass all tourists and head to the church Our Lady on the Rocks. When 
leaving Venice, finds some time to sneak into an abandoned fortress. Get up at 4 in the morning and climb the castle walls of St. Giovanni of Accoltur for the sunrise. Lose yourself in Kokos for one last time before nearly missing your bus. Stop in Budva and run to Mogram Beach if only to take one cliff jump with the locals. Realize that time flies.